fakery, bro. It's complete fakery. Most likely belong to. It's not hundred percent sure. So statistics tell us in our model what's the best situation. It is a statistical guess. Yeah. It's an informed guess. Uh, but it is a, it's, not, it's never a hundred percent sure thing. Growing up, we were German. Not a sure thing? That sure isn't the message here. The big surprise was we're, we're not German at all. 52% of my DNA comes from Scotland and Ireland. So, I traded in my lederhosen for a kilt. So you were shaking your head. <laughs> this one drives me nuts, you know, and I saw it all the other time. Whether you want to wear lederhosen uh, or something else is not tied to your DNA. Okay. Timothy Caulfield is a health policy professor who studies the ancestry business. It's an exciting story, right? It's about you, right? And so I get why they're doing it. But is it really what's happening? You know, is it, can they really be that accurate? Um, I, I think they're selling something that isn't really supported by the science. With 23andMe.com, you can find out your percentages of DNA from 31 populations around the world. What do you think about the messages that are being sent to consumers? I, I think it's misleading. These companies are really trying to push the idea that this is scientific, right? They are using scientific language and they present it in a way that looks very science mm -hmm. and precise. Caulfield says what people are really buying is entertainment. I think it's recreational science. They can have a little bit of fun with this stuff. Don't take it too seriously. But know that you are just getting some information that is an approximation of how your DNA compares to other people. It's not tracing back your heritage. Back in Montreal, Gravel agrees. These specific percentages are, you know, should not be interpreted as like definitive, like here's your percentage ancestry from this place. Like that's not that. No. Yeah. The only ones where we can kind of interpret them like this um, are the continental level. Hmm. Really? The most certain thing they can tell you is which continent you're from? Results are guesses. We highlight the sources of your ancestry which are likely to be present using our best guess of the exact source. The deeper I go, the more questions I have. And at 23 and Me, their guesswork isn't apparent until we stumble upon this. Select confidence level. What? Why does it say 50%? There's another one. This 1970s method builds major muscle at 40. Why was this genius from the 19th? I was shocked. Smith's breakdown from Ancestry showed 97% European and 2% Asian. Told her the results are accurate. She told me there was no way they could have made an error. Smith decided to try again, but this time she submitted a DNA to 23andMe. And the results were very different. Both kids can't be right. One of them has to be wrong. The, these DNA tests for ethnicity are entertainment value only. Are entertain a biology professor at DePaul. He says DNA kits can be great for connecting family members and finding relatives. But the science for ethnicity testing isn't as concrete. There's nothing that confident for ethnicity. There's no diagnostic nucleotide. You can say this person is from Europe, this person's from Africa. It's exciting to me. Giving all praises to Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shah by Hashem Hawachodash. Send double honors to our apostles and elders here, great millstone, peace and blessings to the whole elect. The reason I played those clips was because we had a an Israelite that came by the camp uh, yesterday. I'm sorry, Sunday. And he was one of those knowledgeable Israelites. He knew some scriptures, but when I first heard him speak, when we showed up to the camp, he had his Bible open. He was talking about, he was in Genesis talking about the gods that, that slept, slept with the sun, mingled themselves with the sons of men, right? So these are the ones that, that want to try to be deep. And he got on the topic of science and what his top, what he was saying was, because we were talking about tribes, we were talking about the Southern Kingdom. We have Judah, Benjamin, and Levi, which all categorically can be considered as so-called black people. And we, we agree with that. And he was saying that genetically, that according to science and DNA, there is no difference between the three tribes. 
And what we explained to him is that there are there is a difference between the three tribes because the three tribes actually had different blessings. You could say Judah was set up to be the head. Benjamin had his blessing and Levi were the priests. The Levi, it was important if we were rebuilding the temple and we were offering sacrifices, we would have to set up Levites to do that office. We couldn't just set up anybody to play that role. In fact, there's an account in the scriptures where uh, it's in Ezra and Nehemiah, it's in Ezra, I believe, where they couldn't find the records of two Israelites in particular. That, but they said, oh, I'm from Levi, but they couldn't prove it. So to be on the safe side, they were removed from that position. But his whole thing was, oh, DNA, I'm telling you, science. He kept saying that science, science, science says there is no difference. And ultimately, he ended up walking away because he got offended at the fact that he relies more on science than the scriptures. And like I said, his whole thing was to say that all three tribes are really the same because DNA, DNA says that we're all so-called black. And we're basically trying to tell him, you can't go off of the DNA of what Esau Edom is telling you because you don't you're, you don't know the eyes of the most high. You don't know the eyes of the most. The, you don't it's like you don't have, you don't know the mind of the most high. OK, your eyes can only see what somebody else produced to you. That's about it. When it comes to something like that genetic level, when you have the scriptures, it's clearly telling you you have three different tribes. They each got three different you know, blessings, their own blessings, all the tribes. For you to just say, well, since we all are so-called black, genetically, there is no difference. You can't go into that because you don't know the most high. You don't know you don't know the mind of the most high. Right. And he ended up storming off because he, he was holding on to this belief of science, belief of science. Well, the reason I played those clips was to show you because I already did the research back then because you had a bunch of Israelites saying that uh, we're too afraid to do a DNA test to prove that we're Israelites. Go do a DNA test. And all it takes was a little research to see that, for one, the DNA tests are false. They're false. They sell you a dream. And then it's another video I saw, but I'm not going. I couldn't find it yet. But I already did the research that, first of all, they take the strand from your mother's side. So and we know, according to the scriptures, your lineage is determined by the father's side. So everything you're going to read from that point on is, is is irrelevant. You can say it's irrelevant. They say they go from your mother's side and then they just get an approximation. All they do is to see what pl what people on the planet Earth today, what continents are they found at, And all they're doing is just guessing. You know why? Because they're not the most high. So you can't rely on those stinking DNA tests, one, to prove your nationality, and two, because we ultimately go off the spirit. It's all about the spirit. And two, you can't use the talk about DNA to, to try to prove that genetically, right, there is no difference between Judah, Benjamin, and, and Levi. You can't do that. You don't know the, you don't know the most high. And the science is all a bunch of BS anyway, right? First Timothy chapter, chapter, uh, chapter 1. Paul, an apostle of Yahweh Shah Mashiach, by the commandment of Yahweh our Savior, and the Lord Yahweh Shah Mashiach, which is our hope, unto Timothy, my own son in faith, grace, mercy, and peace from Yahweh our Father and Yahweh Shah Mashiach our Lord. As I beseech thee to abide still at Ephesus when I was when I went to Macedonia, that thou mightest charge some that they teach no other doctrine. Neither give heed to fables and endless genealogies, which minister questions rather than godly edifying, which is in faith. So do. And I read this scripture to him. I said, we don't give heed to fables and endless genealogies because it's just a bunch of endless talk. And I explained to him how, according to the scripture, the Lord told us what to go off of. One, we're going off of faith and we're going off the spirit. If you want to dive into anything else, genetic life or whatever wise, you can get lost in that and reading all his books. And he was one of those things. He was one of those Israelites, like I said, all full of want to be full of knowledge, said, I read all these books and I read all these books and I do all this research. And, you know, you're going off on the, the sons of men mingled themselves with the, you know, book of Genesis where he doesn't understand that. But that's what Jake, a lot of Jake try to dive into. Right. Uh, they want to dive into. Uh, endless endless genealogies and and uh you know he believed that lucifer uh because he uh, you know he did his own self-research you know you're dealing with israelites like that but he got real offended when we started talking about the science 
because his whole thing was, look, science is this, science is that. So I don't care what y'all saying. Science says that we all black and that there's no difference between us. And that's what we say. Well, that's where you're wrong. All right. Because as the scripture says, all it does is minister questions rather than godly edifying, which is in faith. So do now. I wonder if he ever seen these videos talking about some DNA. It's all a bunch of BS. OK, one that go off your mother's side and you want to know why they do that? Because guess who's actually the founder of 23andMe? Uh, Annie Wojoki, if I'm pronouncing that wrong. You know who that is, right? That's the sister of Susan, the one who just passed, the one who uh, was at one point ran YouTube. Yeah, they're both Amalekites. So, and when you go to any other uh, DNA results thing, when you find out who owns that, Amalek runs that. All right, and it makes sense why they would run that because they actually say what according to them they can prove who they are by by dna which is a bunch of bs and, and, and there's no surprise that they're basically the strongholds the gatekeepers to try if anybody wanted to dive into that information right amalek runs that esau edom runs that man and it's a bunch of bs they're just taking your money and they're ta i'm not gonna say it but let's just say when you send in it was research brought out that uh, I believe it was 23 and me. If it was not them, it's the other company that does that. They said that they are going to comply with the police. That's all I'm going to say. Okay. So you had all them Israelites who got mad at us and said, we soft, we weak, we scared to do the test to prove that we have the, whatever the DNA strand is that proved that you come from Africa. We don't need that to prove that we're Israelites and ain't none of them guys teaching anymore. Right. They rely on that. They're, they're, they're just not in the truth. I'm not going to work. We're even speaking on it. We've done videos on it. Right. But this is just why you shouldn't go off of DNA to say to try to prove anything. Really, now, like the only useful information that they bring out regarding the DNA is when they prove that basically the name of the heavenly father is in uh, is in everybody. Right. It's in us. Right. From the, the characters, the Hebrew characters. See, that's dope. OK, that just that just you can use scriptures to validate like you know who can understand the way the most high his ways to pass finding out and he really created us because his his inscription basically is embedded in us see that's dope when you try to go any further than that right you're just gonna get lost just like those guys at ephesus and, and that oh that's no coincidence that that's who paul timothy who is he talking to didn't he just say to ephesus or ephesus yeah when I went to Macedonia, right? Because these Israelites, because he says, and I beseech thee to abide still at Ephesus. Now, when you go to the book of Acts, you find out that they were heavy into endless genealogy, uh, other doctrines, philosophies, the ways of the Greeks. They were heavy in that. Okay. They, they were really big into uh, strange things and strange doctrines, right? Even in, at, and at Athens. And I believe Athens is in Ephesus, I believe. So it makes sense why he said that. Uh, First Timothy chapter six. Verse 19, laying up in store for themselves a good foundation against the time to come that they may lay hold on eternal life. O Timothy, keep that which is committed to thy trust. Avoid profane and vain babblings. And oppositions of science falsely so-called. Okay? So this science falsely so-called avoid it. If anybody tries to use DNA or whatever to try to prove anything, really, like, um, how can you know you're an Israelite? You got the proven DNA and all this other stuff. The, the devil will tell you himself is just an estimation. They're just really taking your money and having fun with the samples you're saying. And, and they're keeping it. And let's just say they agree that they're going to work with the police. Okay. And it's no surprise that it's Amalek that acts as the gatekeeper to that. And did you know that in actually in the state of Israel, they ban. You can't, you're not allowed to do a DNA test in that land, but they'll do it here. Ain't that something, right? Ain't that something, right? When anybody that comes up and try to, to argue on that type of level to try to disprove anything really, Unless unless it's really regarding the doctrine or the scriptures that they're trying to use it to say 
prove something tangible, like in the flesh or whatever, talking about some, I'm 60% white or I'm 66% black or that, that, there's no 60%, there's no percentages in the scriptures. You are what your father is. You, your father, uh, somewhere comes from a tribe. That tribe will have a nationality and that's who you are. Okay, now we mainly deal with the Israelites because that's who we are. That's what the book is for, the Israelites. So we talk about the tribes of the Israelites. If you're an Edomite, just we just say you're an Edomite because we don't have we don't care what tribe you're from. We don't care what tribe from Elam or where unless you, you know if we you you're Kush, right? Or you know, Miss Ryam, you know, things like that. Other than that, that's for you. We as Israelites, we concerned about our tribes. Okay. So just as proof you should not rely on those DNA tests or anything like that to, to try to prove that you're an Israelite or concerning the scripture or anything like that. OK, outside the Bible, it really has no point. All right. It's endless genealogies, vain babblings and falsely science, science falsely so-called with that shalom.